Comcast Corp. is an extremely undervalued dividend growth stock, offering a 2.79% dividend yield. You can buy it today at 11 times earnings, which is, I'll show in the video has been a very, very attractive entry point to buy this company. It's expected to grow at over 10% by the quarter ending in September. I would expect this stock to be a $52 stock that you can buy with an incredible margin of safety at $38 a share. Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of Fast Graphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, a.k.a. Mr. Valuation. And, you know, I've been um, really... Um, trying to figure out what what's the best way I can help the subscribers to this channel be better investors. And of course, you know, one thing I think that I can do, that I can be a little more prolific and offer you more opportunities to see good stocks. So I'm going to start a series here where I'm going to do what I call analyze out loud videos, and I'm going to offer research candidates. Now, these are going to be, for many parts, pre-research companies. There will be companies I'll be showing that I have researched thoroughly, but primarily, I want to offer companies that you can research from a standpoint of valuation, companies that appear to be attractively valued or either really close to it. So I'm going to do it and go through and analyze by the numbers, utilizing fast graphs and looking at fundamentals relative to the price of the stock. So it's going to be very, you know, quick videos and we're going to cursory do that. So, you know, I'm going to start my first video today is Comcast. I think it's an extremely attractive growth stock. And so let's go ahead and get into the company and look at Comcast by the numbers, utilizing the powerful Fast Graphs Fundamentals Analyzer software tool to think with. To start out, I want to take price off of the graph and give everybody a perspective of how consistent and powerful this company has been. Now, this is operating earnings, not gap earnings. Now, I can also look at gap earnings, and I'll go ahead and look at diluted earnings here, and you can see that you get a pretty you know, different picture with diluted earnings where you get non-cash charges, one-time events, you know, things that are non-cash you know, gains as well as you know, charges, etc. So no matter how you look at this company, however, it looks very, very inexpensive right now. So let me go ahead and bring price into the graph, and let me focus on operating earnings here. Now, I'm going to increase this graph as far back as I can go on fast graphs, and I want to make a point. As Mr. Valuation, this is a stock that used to command very, very high valuations back in 2001, 2002, all the way coming into the Great Recession, even on January of 2008, this stock still commanded a P.E. ratio of 22.91. And you can see how poor the performance was during this period of time of overvaluation. You know, performance was actually negative, and yet the company itself was growing earnings at unbelievably fast rates, as you can see here as I move my mouse. You know, we grew about 60%, 300%, 95%. So this was a very fast growth area, but the market was pricing it so high that it really had nowhere to go. So now if I drop this to where we're just coming out of the recession, you can see that if you'd have bought this stock at just under 12 times earnings here on March 6, 2009, and held it even though it's undervalued significantly today, you'd have still averaged over 17% a year. So this is a powerful stock that has a very excellent dividend record. You can see they've raised their dividend every single year. And based on operating earnings, the stock is selling at a very significant discount to, to its fair value. But the other thing I like about Comcast is looking at it since it's a dividend-paying stock and it's A-minus rated, has about 50.82% debt to capital, the company is also a cash cow. I mean, it throws off a lot of cash. And you can see that if I, you know, forget about stock price here and forget about valuation. If you just look at the amount of cash it throws off compared to the dividend, you know, the dividend payout ratio of cash flow is about under 20% a year. So there's a lot of upside and a lot of safety in owning the dividend. Now, we can look at this, you know, same way of free cash flow, which I always call the asset test, you know, what's left over after, you know, the company spending all the money. And you can see, you know, free cash flow numbers are significantly higher. Now, the payout ratios here are closer to 30 percent, but that's still very, very low. So the company generates an awful lot of cash in, in addition to, you know, free cash flow and operating cash flow. 
moving on to other metrics that you know you should always look at when you're evaluating stock, let's go ahead and look at EBITDA, which is a soft form of cash flow, in my opinion. And you'll see that EBITDA covers the dividend as well. But notice that the stock price was trading at a significant premium to its normal price to EBITDA. And this is the normal price to EBITDA, which has been about 5.28. You can currently buy it at a blended price to EBITDA of 486 so again, we see a nice margin of safety for EBITDA. Same for EBIT, which I'll, you know, for sake of time, save you. And then let's look at price to sales. The company normally trades at a price to sales ratio of about 1.86. That's what this orange line is on the graph here, looking at sales, 1.86. And you can see right now you can buy it at a blended price to sales of 1.47. So no matter what metric you measure the company by, It looks very, very inexpensive now, and you can see that the company's stock price tracks these metrics. I think that's another very important point. It's where the earnings go of the company and the cash flows of the company go is where the price ultimately goes. And right now, you can buy this at a very undervalued formula. From a standpoint of price to safety, the stock, again, is worth over $52 a share by the end of this quarter. And by fiscal year end, I expect it to be almost a $54 stock. Fair value-wise, that's using only a 15 P.E. If I looked at the normal P.E., which has been over 17 by year end, this could be a $62 stock and offering a substantial gain you know, over just the next couple of quarters, say five, six weeks, compared to what the price is now. So you could almost double your money by year end if this got trading back to its normal P.E., And keep in mind, it wasn't, you know, just June of last year and July of last year. It was trading at a 19 and a half P.E., significantly above what it's trading at now, almost twice the P.E. it was now. And historically, again, you can see that even during this time when the market has been trending more rational on this stock, it was very often trading at 19 and 20 P.E. So I see a lot of upside in this company. Looking at it from a standpoint Of the health check, the company generates stronger gross margins and stronger net margins than its industry peers. It has very, very good margins at roughly 55%. Return on assets have also been significantly higher than industry peers. Return on equity has also been significantly higher. This is all things as fast graph subscribers you can do yourselves. I'm looking at the last decade. Now, long-term debt to capital, just very slightly, pretty much in line with industry peers, if maybe just slightly worse. But this company has also made an awful lot of acquisitions. Now, you can also go into fund graphs. I want to remind subscribers now and look at, you know, obviously all of the financials, the full financial statements of the company are available to you. And this is what, you know, these are things you could do to finish your research process on the company. But the bottom line is I offer this as a very, very strong research candidate. We're probably getting close to a 3% yield now. If you look at a quote, for example, at the Wall Street Journal, they would be listing the yield, the current dividend yield of 2.84%. That's very, very attractive, I think, for a company that has this kind of quality, this kind of credit rating, this kind of consistent operating results. And notice how COVID, where they actually did have an earnings drop, and notice how you know the stock price overreacted then, and then we had this strong reaction. The market thought that the last earnings report was somewhat negative because of subscriber growth and stuff. I thought it was actually a really strong earnings report. They report again on October 26th. So I think you've got a great opportunity to be picking up these shares now at a really attractive valuation. And keep in mind, you know, even though this stock is undervalued, it still has, you know, 15 plus percent annualized performance, you know, since coming out of the Great Recession, which was the last time you could buy it under 12 times earnings. So I would recommend any of you who are looking for a good dividend growth story, a company that can offer you total return as well as a good dividend yield and as well as a growing dividend yield, you might want to take a look, add this as one of the research candidates on your list now. And if you're a FastGraph subscriber, you can go in and look at, you know, and you do have to subscribe to the services like this, but you can, you know, go ahead and get a subscription to something like Morningstar like I have and go ahead and learn a lot more about the company. There are a lot of other research services out there, Seeking Alpha, et cetera. So anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the fundamentals analyzer software tool, offering up the first and what I'm going to call my analyze out loud videos 
where I simply go and look at the company by the numbers as the first step in a more comprehensive research process. But I would encourage you guys to pick those companies that I cover for you that meet your own investment goals, own objectives, own risk tolerances, et cetera. And, you know, if you're a FastGraph subscriber, use the tool to help you make better, more prudent, long-term decisions. Also, if you haven't done it, subscribe to this channel, um, ring the bell, give me a like, and all those good things. And I look forward to offering you a, a series of research candidates in both growth stocks as well as dividend growth stocks. I'm going to try to mix it up for you that you can um, look at and research you know, that appear to be reasonably valued, if not undervalued. Comcast, I think, is one that even offers a great margin of safety. Thanks for watching.